Do you guys want to color? Yeah. Christina Whaley's daughters play like many kids their age. Build me a castle to sleep in. Six-year-old yeah. Kaylin likes to scoot her toy car around the living room. Yeah, show us how you push it. She can even provide sound effects. <laughs> but there's a lot Kaylin and her four-year-old sister, Karis, can't do. They can't string together more than a few words. They can't walk. Show us how you walk, sissy. They can't do most routine tasks without help. You know, I would have never thought that I would have two children with um, with any kind of disease. Um, and unfortunately, that was what happened. It happened because Whaley passed down faulty mitochondria to both of them. Mitochondria power all the cells in your body, and you get them directly from your mother. The DNA in Whaley's mitochondria is mutated. Every egg that I have, um, is gonna have some percentage of the mutation. Her daughters both inherited a rare type of mitochondrial disease known as NARP. Lifespan varies, but kids with severe forms of mitochondrial disease often don't live past childhood. It took Whaley more than two years to pin down a diagnosis for Kaylin. By then, she'd already given birth to Karis, not realizing she was passing down the same disease. My dream was to have three to four kids, and that was always the idea and the plan, and we had it all like figured out as what ages I was going to have them, and how spaced apart, and what month I was going to get pregnant in, and everything was like all figured out. Doctors have advised Whaley against having any more children, but soon they might be able to offer another option. Scientists have been developing a twist on in vitro fertilization that could help mothers like Whaley have children of their own without passing on disease. It's still a long way from any fertility clinic, but here's how the procedure could work. Doctors would extract an egg from the mother carrying bad mitochondria. They'd remove the nucleus from that egg, and with it, the genetic traits mom would pass down to her kids. Then they'd implant that nucleus inside another egg donated by a different woman, an egg with healthy mitochondria. Fertilize that egg with dad's sperm, and in theory, you'd end up with a baby free of mitochondrial disease. But because mitochondria do contain their own DNA, any child produced this way would inherit a small fraction of DNA from that second woman. That's why some have called this technique three-parent in vitro fertilization. This term, uh, three-parent embryo, is meant to be uh, inflammatory and pejorative. Evan Snyder, a professor at the Sanford Burnham Medical Research Institute, prefers the term nuclear transfer. Whatever you call it, it's highly controversial, something Snyder knows well. Last year, he chaired the FDA committee that decided to wait for more animal studies before recommending this for human trials. But even that cautious conclusion aroused fears that manipulating embryos to this extent could put us on the slippery slope toward designer babies. That typically is what comes up. If we do it for mitochondrial diseases, will we start doing it for sex or for prowess in academics or sports? Snyder says this procedure wouldn't let parents anywhere near genes for traits like eye color. That's why he urged lawmakers in the UK to vote yes. I absolutely feel that the UK made the right decision. I really felt like this vote was premature. Paul Knopfler is a UC Davis School of Medicine professor who argues this would create genetically modified humans. He worries that using it to stamp out mitochondrial disease could lead to equally bad developmental disorders or miscarriage. And he points out that any unexpected problems in children born this way could be hereditary. We're talking about, you know, permanently changing human DNA, you know, the human genome. And so I think it is reasonable to think about, you know, how this could have repercussions for many generations in the future. Let's build something. Meanwhile, mothers like Christina Whaley are hopeful about any new option. I definitely wanted to hear that there was an option for me to have more children. Um, I definitely, you know, can't imagine my life without having children in it. Um, and of course I want, you know, a healthy child. She's heard the concerns, but if the procedure were available tomorrow, she says she'd try it right away. David Wagner, KPBS News.